Okay, let's talk about our graphs of derivatives. So that last, that first little part here out of 3.2 is kind of like a repeat out of 3.1. Now let's talk about our graphs. If you're graphing, okay, so let me write this. If your graph is not continuous, remember we talked a lot about continuity. There is no derivative there. All right, how did we find derivatives? We're finding limits, right? If your graph is not continuous, you don't have a limit there. Ergo, you don't have a derivative there. See how it all connects? Cool, right? So if your graph is not continu continuous, automatic, no derivative there, all right? However, there are some other scenarios that we need to be taking a look at that does not have a derivative also. If I have this graph, and it comes in like this. That's called a cusp. A cusp is when it comes to the point. There is no derivative at a cusp, all right? A derivative is the slope of a tangent line. So if I'm looking at this line, and I'm coming in here at this specific value, I'm going to have a vertical tangent. And I can't have a derivative of a vertical tangent because what's the slope of a, of a vertical line? Undefined, right? Check out how those algebra skills are paying off. So I can't have a derivative at a cusp. So if it comes to a point like that, that's called a cusp, and you automatically know there's no derivative there. Okay. Also, I can look at a graph like this. Uh, I don't know, come up, and then go through that. So like what we just talked about. What's happening right here? What kind of tangent line is happening right there where Blackie is? It's a vertical tangent again, right? And that's the issue. That's the issue. Vertical tangent, that's also no derivative. No derivative. These are important things to figure out here because it makes a huge impact, especially whenever you get into graphing these, which we will. <laughs> also, if I have some graph that comes up like it comes along and then it comes to a point, same concept, that's a cusp and there's no derivative at that cusp. It's at that point again, right there, right? And there's no derivative at that point because remember that's the other thing. A derivative is happening at a specific point, right? I can have a derivative everywhere as I come along through here. Oh, that's fine, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Bam, not right there because I don't have anything that I'm working with. Bam, not right there, but I can have all of these other derivatives, no problem. All right? It's not taking out the whole thing. It's just at that specific point, that's where you can't have a derivative. Okay? Okay, so look at this graph. I want us to be able to look at a graph. Here's actually, let's scoot this up here a little bit. This is actually... Example seven. We're skipping around just a little bit because I want you to see what's going on. Here's example seven. Part A says, find the values in my interval from negative four to four. Notice it's parentheses, so not including, at which G, which is my function here, is not continuous. So where is it not continuous? Yeah, right here because it, it jumps, right? And where else? Yes, because it's a hole. Remember, hole is not continuous. So at x is equal to negative 2 and positive 2, my graph is not continuous. 
Okay, now find the values in my same interval from negative four to four at which G is not differentiable. So where else? Yeah, so still not differentiable here, right? Because it's you can't have a differentiable at the jumping. Okay. Yep, again, not continuous here. Good, so at two. But is there anywhere else? Yes, I have a cusp. So at negative two, zero, and two. It is continuous at my cusp. However, it is not differentiable because I have that vertical tangent. All right, so it can be continuous, but still not differentiable. But if it's not continuous, that's an automatic not differentiable. Okay, let's talk more about these graphs a little.